Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're gonna try out the new MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix Cream to Powder Foundation. I cannot believe this is not getting more noise. I barely see this promoted, and I don't know why, because the MAC Studio Fix Powder is one of the most popular powders on the market. It's been around for decades, Everybody has had it in their kit or their makeup bag, whether you're a makeup lover, enthusiast, professional makeup artist, it is a holy grail to most of us. And they reformulate it, and I don't know why it's not getting more noise, it's crazy. This is now infused with hyaluronic acid. It is more on the lightweight fill. We'll get into the details in just a second, but I'm excited for you guys to see how this applies. We are gonna do a wear test, but before we get started, please give this video a huge thumbs up and hit that like button. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, you guys, let's just jump right into it because I am very excited. I know I say that all the time, but I'm excited because it's new makeup. But this is the newest member to the MAC Studio Fix family, and I can't wait to try it out. So it's their new cream to powder foundation. And if you look at that chart, it has a lot less coverage. But as you can see across the board, it is not supposed to cause acne. They're all sweat and humidity resistant. But this new cream to powder foundation, as well as the concealer, have the claims of no crease and no caking. But this new one does not claim to control oil or shine, so that is something to keep in mind if you have very oily skin. I have normal to dry skin. Right now it's just very normal and not really dry. But the first two are oil free, so that might be good for oily skin too. So you know, don't always, you gotta try it before you say it's not gonna work. This is the only one to have the claim of immediate and long-term moisturization so it's going to be really great for my dry, very dry skin girls, but across the board, they're for all skin types. The only one that does have the SPF in this family is the liquid foundation. The packaging is typical MAC packaging, nothing different, comes with a sponge, and you do wanna make sure that when you close this, you securely close it because it will dry out. So be very, very mindful of that. This product runs $36, it's 0.35 ounces, 10 grams of product. It runs about $3.66 per gram. It is a little bit more expensive than the regular Studio Fix powder for $33, and you do get more grams in ounces in that. You get 15 grams 
and 0.52 ounces in the regular Studio Fix powder, looking at 220 per gram. So you are paying a little bit more for the Studio Fix Tech Cream to Powder Foundation. This new version comes in 42 all-inclusive shades, and the regular Studio Fix powder comes in 53 shades. The color descriptions did not match up from the regular to the new version. So I wouldn't go by your original shade. I would definitely do the research before you decide to do that. Typically I wear NC30 when it comes to MAC Studio Fix powders, and that's a golden olive with a golden undertone. In the new version, NC30 is a medium beige with golden undertone, and it appeared darker on the screen, but again, you know I'm looking at the internet. So I also wear NC35 sometimes, and NC35 in the original version is natural beige with a golden undertone for medium skin, and the new version, NC35 would have been a neutral beige with a neutral peachy undertone. So that's where I really saw the difference in that. And that scared me and I didn't want anything to be too pink. As you can see on the MAC website right there, all the light mediums had a rosy or peachy undertone which is why I kind of stuck to the light because it did have more of a beige golden undertone. So hopefully this will work out. All right, let's just start applying this. I'm so excited to try this out. They do recommend using this with either a sponge or a brush. We are gonna go in with that MAC 170 brush. You guys already know if you watch my channel, I am a big fan of that MAC 170 brush. So let's see what this texture is like. I haven't even played with this, you guys. I'm so interested. Just wanna see the texture. So it's very, very creamy. It's gonna look a lot lighter on my screen with all my lights and stuff, but in person, it looks like a pretty darn, oh no, it's pretty light. Oh boy, oh boy, Christy, darn it. Okay, well, we're just gonna work with this today because, <laughs> oh, because we have to. Okay, I should've got two colors, but what are you going to do? We're just gonna make it work, you guys. We're just gonna make it work. It looked like the NC30 and 35 were gonna be way too dark, but apparently I probably should have stuck to a darker color. All right, let's get this out of my way so we don't get color or foundation on my hair. All right, oh boy, I'm nervous now. We'll go in with the brush first. I know this is gonna be too light. Don't judge, okay? I should have bought two and I didn't because I was trying to save some money, <laughs> but that's okay. We're just gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do the best we can with this. All right, we're just gonna take some on the brush right there and just kind of work this into the skin and I will just have to figure it out. <laughs> Oh boy, you guys, I tell you, it's so hard to determine. Sometimes I do good and sometimes I don't. And you know what? We're just gonna take this all the way down the neck right now. And we're just gonna bronze up the skin as much as we can. So that's okay, that's okay. I'll make it work. I will make it work. Since I already did my eyebrows, I'm gonna take my Marc Jacobs brush and go around my brows. And of course I got it from MAC. So now I have to go to a Mac store and exchange it. Their return policy isn't as fun as when you buy it. I should have just bought it from Nordstrom's or Macy's, it would have been easier. All right, so the coverage is definitely more medium. You know, it's not covering up all my spots. And all I have on right now is my Dermablend Pore Saver Matte Primer, and that's all I have on. And my a moisturizer, my Cetaphil moisturizer, and that's it. I mean, it's blending, it's very creamy and beautiful. I can, I can bronze up the skin and obviously make it darker. So I'm not worried about that. That's just one very light coverage of it. All right, we're just gonna kind of build it up a little bit more and see how we like it. They infuse this new formula with hyaluronic acid. It has a tri-system blend of water, emollients, and powder that are supposed to glide onto the skin, giving it a very soft, lightweight, creamy texture. It does have light diffusing properties to soften lines and create a flawless texture for all skin types. I'm just pulling away some of the product just to make sure I didn't put too much on, but it built very nicely, you guys. Very nicely, you know, although it's too light for me, obviously. It's not as bad in person as it is on the camera. Just keep that in mind with my lights and everything. It just makes everything look way lighter. So just please bear that in mind. Don't come for me in the comments saying way too light. Okay, we're not perfect. We don't always know like what we're gonna get out of it. But honestly, you guys, 
If I went up on, on the color, I think I would really like this. And I'm gonna have to wait till I can go in store and really find my color because I honestly don't know at this point what I'm going to be and I don't wanna sit there and buy a ton of them not knowing and trying out and wasting product. So, cause I don't wanna have to return it. Uh, yeah, so I think it's, it's really pretty though. I mean, the finish is gorgeous. It's not gonna give you like the Studio Fix matte coverage that the powder does. But what I think I'm gonna end up doing is going in with my NC35. So this is NC35 and then I like NC30 as well, depending on my skin tone. Let me swatch some of these and I'll put them next to each other. So as you can see on my arm right there, you have the brand new Studio Tech Cream to Powder NC15. And then we have the MAC Studio Fix Powder in NC25 that I like to use under my eyes. That's a beautiful color. And then NC30 is my favorite out of all of the powder colors on my skin tone. It has the most yellow undertone. And then you have NC35, which is more of like a beige undertone. I wanna see how the Studio Fix over this plays out. We're just gonna do it on a very fluffy brush because I don't want too much pigment. So we'll take my Real Techniques brush and just kind of just set down that cream a little bit. It feels a little tacky, that's why. And the fact that it's not transfer resistant, so that scares me a little. We are gonna see how this wears underneath a mask. I would never just leave the cream to powder and, and not set it. That's just my preference, but that's just kind of how it looks with the powder. Just very soft, pretty. I like that. I actually just kind of made it more like how I like it. Just a very soft matte finish. And then we're gonna take a darker color and bronze up the skin a little bit. I have NC45 and we'll bronze up with that. So this is NC30, you guys. Obviously, I like it a lot because I almost hit pan on that. We're gonna bronze up the skin a little with my Chikahoto PS2 brush. It's a natural hair brush, so it's not gonna put, I just wanna tap that off because I don't want too much pigment since it is, you know, foundation powder. Ooh, that's pretty. See how that just kind of just bronzed up the skin? Let's take that on the jawline right here and just kind of blend so that we don't have so much of a light to dark transition. I think I got a little bit more sun too because I've been running outside and here in SoCal, it's been pretty sunny. Yeah, that's just gonna kind of bronze up, bring some life and dimension back into the skin. But very pretty. See how that just brings life? I really like NC45 for that. And if you have textured or, you know, like just breakouts there or anything, it kind of just adds a little bit more coverage there as well as bronzing it up at the same time. So very beautiful. I just kind of wanted to see how that would look. Let's finish this off with some blush. My two favorite MAC blushes are Peaches and Modern Mandarin. Modern Mandarin is like my absolute favorite. I feel like this doesn't even get talked about a lot. It's kind of like a coral. I don't think you're gonna be able to see on my skin. The only thing, it's like now that I like play with MAC blushes, I'm like, I don't know how much I love them because there's so many other good ones on the market right now. But this is the OG and before all the other brands, this is the one I loved the most. So oddly enough, so let's go in with my IT Cosmetics brush. We'll take some of that Modern Mandarin on there. I love Peaches too. Peaches is enough. I actually like combining the two. Peaches has a little bit more pigment to me. So I'm gonna combine the two and just kind of tap that off. Let's smile, give myself some color before I go in and do other stuff. But yeah, so pretty, right? Let me uh, dust that off. It does have a lot of pigment. I don't know why I sent it in. I just haven't used it in a while. I think all the products are laying very beautiful on this foundation, you guys. Very beautiful. I forgot how beautiful these blushes were. I haven't used them in a long time. I did go in with the MAC eye cream. This is one of my favorite eye creams. This is the Fast Response Eye Cream. I've been using this for a very, very long time. I just don't mention it a lot on my channel. I do love this contour shade, and I did powder contour with this a little bit. I didn't do too much of it, but I love this from Mac. You get these, um, these are the refillable ones. I'll put it, the information down right there, but it reminds me a lot of my Hoola bronzer. This is like my Z palette type 
packaging, it's a Morphe one, but it's kind of like a Z palette. And I carry like my staples in here. These are the products that I travel with. I always have to have with me my Makeup Forever powders, my Kat Von D Lyric. And then these are two MAC eyeshadows. It's nylon, and then I don't remember that color. I'll put it right there. But I always have this with me. It's just my must have. And it's such a, that contour color is such, their sculpture ones are so good. If you're light or even like light medium, even on medium side, that is a beautiful way to contour. I'll talk about that in my contour video coming up. But yeah, I mean, all in all, I'm so far, I'm really liking this foundation, you guys. I think it is wearing so far very beautiful. I started at nine this morning. It's about one o'clock right now. I will come back at the end of the day. We'll do a good, probably solid 10 hours. I'm gonna go film another video. I'm gonna go do an eyeshadow look, the new Urban Decay Wild Wild West palette. So I will go film that and then I'll come back on at the end of the day and let you know my rankings where I rank this. I'll probably rank it like a liquid type foundation because I do feel like it it does go on more like a liquid. I don't I don't necessarily feel like the powdered finish. I felt like I still needed to, need it to set it, but I mean that's up to you whether or not you want to set it or not. I think at first I was a little scared because I was like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I mean, this is an iconic best-selling powder. A lot of people love this. I was afraid with them, you know, coming out with a new version, would people like it? I don't even see a lot of videos on this and I was very excited to try it out because I am a big fan of the powder. And I know a lot of people that are a lot of friends and family that love this powder. So I so far really like it. I think they're kind of getting with the times now and people like more luminous foundations, lighter weight foundation, especially in this, what we're, this time we're living in right now. The only thing it is not transfer resistant. So keep that in mind. We will put a mask on and see if, if it rubs off or not, but yeah, I mean, so far I really like it. I think by setting it down just lightly with like the fluffiest brush so you don't get a lot of product on there, I think it's a smart thing to do if you really wanna make it transfer resistant because I don't think on with this alone you're gonna get that transfer resistant property. So yeah, very excited. Let's just wrap this up for right now and I'll see you guys at the end of the day. All right, you guys, we're at the end of the day and we're a little over nine hours. It's now 6.22. I started around 9 a.m. this morning and I think this is worn pretty darn good. Again, I have more normal to dry skin, so I'm not quite sure how it's going to work on oily skin. I feel like I haven't had to retouch it or anything. So it looks really nice as far as that. My lines are gonna show through. If you're new to my channel, I've never had Botox. I'm gonna be 43 here very shortly. And I've never had anything done to my face. So I'm gonna have those aging lines showing through. And I feel like it wore really nicely. I mean, my frown lines are pretty prominent. And of course that seeps in, nothing's a miracle. Do I feel like it's the best foundation I've ever used? No, but I think it's really pretty. I'm actually kind of surprised. I wasn't sure how I was gonna like it, to be honest with you. It has a weird smell, you guys. And I don't know, I know, I don't know what it is about these smells lately, but it's not a fragrance or anything. It's almost like a, like a chalky smell to it. I don't know, it's an interesting smell, but <laughs> it's okay. It doesn't, like, it dissipates. But upon application, you can definitely smell it. Is it better than the MAC Studio Fix? I think it's different. So you can't really compare. They're not apples to apples or apples and oranges because this is a powder and this is more of like a liquid foundation that has like, light reflecting particles to give it that cream to powder finish. But I do feel like you do need to set this. So let's get into the product rankings for this so I don't talk too much. So we're gonna have five categories. If you're new to my channel, I like to rank products that I try out and let you know the percentage of what I would recommend it. So we're looking at a total score of 50. We'll start with packaging. Packaging, you know, is typical MAC packaging. It's pretty, it's not amazing, you know, it's plastic, but they still keep things at a pretty decent price. Do I feel like they can kind of up their game a little bit on the packaging? I do, because they are they are charging a little bit more for this than the powder. So I do feel like it could have been a little sturdier. This is kind of frustrating right here. I feel like I can't get that down very easily. So that's kind of frustrating. I don't know, that tab is a little difficult. You know, the sponge is the sponge. I didn't even use it. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice, but make sure you keep that 
nice and tight because you don't want it to dry out and they will dry out if you do not keep that nice and snug. So make sure it's closed appropriately. So packaging, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. It's standard Mac packaging. You can't really criticize it too much. I just had a hard time opening it, which is why I didn't give it a 10 out of 10. All right, let's move on to shade range. Shade range is pretty good, 42 inclusive shades. I do find it a little interesting that they didn't just match it up directly to the MAC Studio Fix powder. I mean, we're looking at 42 versus 53, and they didn't quite correlate, but they're different formulations, so I kind of understand that. You know, you can't really compare it when it's one's a powder and one's a cream to powder foundation. So I, I, I kind of understand that, but I had a little difficult time finding my shade. But you guys, even though it seemed way too light, does it not feel like it matches pretty good now? So even though it's supposed to stay colored true 12 hours, I do feel like it oxidized a little bit. So, and that's our natural oils and stuff like that. And I kind of had a feeling it was going to do that. So I think with my bronzer and everything else, it blended really nice. As far as shade range goes, I'm going to give it a good nine out of 10 because I do feel like the shade range is always good with MAC Cosmetics. They pretty much nail it when it comes, like I said, everybody always goes back to comparing their foundations to MAC numbers like NC20, NC35. So I, I do feel like they always deliver a very good shade range. All right, you guys, let's move over into application. So application, I'm actually gonna give this a good solid eight out of 10. I do feel like it really did deliver in a very beautiful way with the brush. I don't recommend using this with a sponge unless you wanna try it with the built-in sponge that they give you. I don't feel like my blender did a really good job. I felt like it was kind of splotchy, but my MAC 170 synthetic foundation brush was beautiful. It was very, very easy. And I love the fact that you don't have, you know, that mess that liquid foundations can kind of give you. You got to put it on the back of your hand or figure, you know, have a tray. I do love that it's very easy just to get in there and put it on in a very quick manner. And I do feel like it applied very easy and very fast. I probably could have done this in like a minute. So application is a good eight out of 10. I just, the smell, the smell was a little off-putting, which is why I kind of docked down the points. Let's move over into product claims. I'll quickly show those bullet points right there. We already went over the product claims, but as far as a 12 hour wear, I think that's, you know, I think we're heading towards that direction in a good way. Color true for 12 hours. Again, I do feel like it did oxidize a little, so keep that in mind. Non-caking, non-fading, we kind of already went over that. I don't think it's cakey, but I do feel like my lines were starting to show through. Crease resistant, I don't know. We don't know about sweat and humidity resistant. Provides an immediate long-term moisturization. I do believe it does do that. It doesn't cause acne, we'll see about that. And I love that it's oil-free and it's supposed to be for all skin types. So product claims, I'm gonna give it a good solid eight out of 10 because I do feel like it performed in a very beautiful way and measured up to most of those product claims. Let's pull out this mask. So this is a brand new disposable mask. I get these on Amazon, you guys, and I always keep these by the door. So this is brand new, nothing on it. We're going to, I'm not going to talk because I'm going to go like this with my lips. So make sure my lips don't get on there. We'll see how much makeup gets on this mask. <laughs> Okay, that was on for just a second. It actually just my lipstick, a little bit on the nose area. I didn't have it on for that long, but it didn't do too bad. I mean, I think if you guys can see that, it's just a little bit of my lipstick and then, you know, a little bit up here. But again, I don't know if it went on for a longer amount of time. I'll leave it in the description box when I wear it again. So, or the comment section, I'll pin a comment, let you guys know how bad it gets on your mask. But that's pretty good, actually. I'm just gonna go like this. Actually, I'm impressed. I mean, typically some foundations, I mean, it's getting on there a little bit. Some foundations though, it's like, oh my gosh, it's a travesty. <laughs> anyway, so I think that wore pretty good. So eight out of 10 is not bad. Let's move over into pricing. So pricing, I was a little surprised. I don't know if it's the formulation, why they're charging a little bit more for the cream to powder foundation. I'll flip up that screen right there. And it's $36, 10 grams of product, 0.35 ounces. We'll get into that in just a second. $3.60 per gram. The regular Studio Fix powdered foundation is $33.52 ounces, 15 grams of product, and only $2.20 per gram. 
The reason why I said we'll get into that in just a second is because most liquid, and I'm gonna compare this to liquid foundations, even though it's a cream compact, I'm gonna compare it to my liquid foundations. And those are one ounce. $36 for 0.3, what is it, 0.36 ounces is not very much product. We'll go through this pretty darn fast, you guys, if you're using this on an everyday basis. So as far as pricing goes, I'm gonna give this a six out of 10, you guys. I just felt like, for $36, I wish you would have given me a little bit more. I can get a really great NARS foundation that I love for $39 in a whole ounce of it. So that's why I'm just like, uh, six out of 10. So now we're looking at a total Allure score of 40 out of 50. So. 80% of me would recommend this foundation. I will throw up the chart right there. That's my current foundation rankings and where that lays within my current foundation rankings. There's just other foundations on that ranking list that I just appreciate a little bit more, but I do really like the finish of this, you guys, and it's really starting to grow on me and I do feel like it wore pretty darn good. I Maybe I got a lemon, maybe this smell is not supposed to be there. I might try out a different shade as well, so we'll have to just keep playing with it. Let me know if you're a big Mac Studio Fix fan, if you even heard about this product, were interested in trying this product. I love hearing from you guys. If you're new to my channel, please remember to hit that subscribe button and click that bell right there so you can get notified. I do upload new videos every Sunday and you don't want to miss it. Please give this video a huge thumbs up, hit that like button, follow me at Christy Allure on Instagram and on my blog, ChristyAllure.com, and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye guys. Wanna move my feet? Wanna move my feet? Wanna drop my one? Wanna move my feet? Wanna drop my one? Wanna move my feet?